This is the Bishop of Motivation. Hanajali said, when you are inspired by some great purpose, some extraordinary project, all your thoughts break their bonds. Your mind transcends limitations. Your consciousness expands in every direction and you find yourself in a new, great and wonderful world. Norman Foster's faculties and talents become alive and you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be. This is the Bishop of Motivation. This is the Bishop of Motivation, Spence Finlayson. Today, as we go in search of inspiration, I'm pleased to present to you one of my all-time favorite actors, Sir Sean Connery. While one might dispute the actual number of people who would qualify for star status, no one would dispute the premise that Sean Connery is one of them. Moreover, he is not merely a star, he's a superstar. He began his theatrical career as an extra in the chorus, playing bit parts and modeling. From those modest beginnings, he became an international film icon. Many believe that his talent and appeal continue to improve with time. His humble beginnings, growing up in a working class neighborhood in Edinburgh, Scotland, gave no indication of the achievements that were destined to come. Sean was born into a working class family in August of 1930. The oldest of two boys, he spent much of his youth working at menial jobs just to get by. He left school at an early age and went to work full time. At 16, he enlisted in the Royal Navy. Like many young men in the Navy, he opted for a tattoo. However, unlike many tattoos, his were not frivolous. His tattoos reflect two of his lifelong commitments. One, his family, and two, Scotland. After six decades, his tattoos still reflect those two ideas. One tattoo is a tribute to his parents, and it reads, Mom and Dad. And the other is self-explanatory, Scotland forever. After three years of the naval service and a long bout with stomach ulcer that shortened his naval career, he returned to Edinburgh, Scotland, and seemed to settle into a life of hard work as a bricklayer, a lifeguard, and as a coffin polisher. Sean spent much of his full-time bodybuilding, a pastime that eventually started his acting career. His hobby of bodybuilding culminated in a bid for the 1950 Mr. Universe title, where he placed third. From his early acting days until his first superstar role, Sean's stardom was certainly not an overnight success. From his first work in modeling, but bit theatrical parts and chorus appearances, it was almost eight years before he was cast opposite Lana Turner in another time, another place in 1958. It would be another four years before he first uttered those unforgettable words, Bond, James Bond. Connery skyrocketed to international fame as the suave, confident, and many say definitive secret agent 007 in six of Ian Fleming's Bond movies over the next decade, starting off with Dr. No in 1962, Goldfinger in 1964, From Russia With Love in 1964, Thunderball in 1965, You Only Live Twice in 1967, and Diamonds Are Forever in 1971. He then broadened his career with an Agatha Christie whodunit, Murder on the Orient Express in 1974, John Huston's adaptation of Kipling's adventure, The Man Who Would Be King, 
1975, and the medieval romance Robin and Marion in 1976, and Peter Himes' sci-fi film Outland in 1981. He resurfaced as a much wiser and more mature born in 1983 adventure Never Say Never Again. The 90s brought uh, such films as The Hunt for Red October in 1990 as a Russian sub commando, in 1993's Rising Sun as an exploit in all things Japanese, Dragon Heart in 1996, and the successful contemporary action dramas Just Cause in 1995 and The Rock in 1996. In 1999, Conry starred in and produced for Fountain Bridge Films, Entrapment, a love story thriller co-starring Catherine Zeta-Jones. The year 2000 brought what may have said to be one of his best films, Finding Forrester, in Sean's latest movie, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, was released in 2003. Many critics and fans alike have said that the quality of his acting has only improved with age. Certainly his personal appeal has. In 1989, at almost 60 years of age, he was voted People's Magazine Sexiest Man Alive. When advised of the award, Sean seemed to be unaffected as he replied, and I quote, well, there aren't many sexy dead men, are there? End of quote. I can recall as a young boy growing up in Nassau, Bahamas, when Thunderball was filmed here around 1964-65 with Sean Connery as 007 James Bond. And they created a special junkanoo event on Bay Street just for the movie. And I was homesick with the measles, and my mother would not let me go to see the filming at Bay Street. I wanted Sean Connery to be a guest on my Bahamas base. Uh, international motivational television show, Dare to be Great. So I delivered a letter to the office in Life at Key, where he has a home, and I was pleasantly surprised a few days later when I received the message that he left on my answering machine. I was blown away. And the message said, All right, this is Sean Connery. I received your invitation to appear on Dare to be Great, but I'm not feeling well right now but I wish you much success in your endeavors in television." End of quote. Wow, I was just blown away. I personally believe that Sean Connery is the best actor that ever played James Bond. This is Finlayson. Spence Finlayson. Licensed to thrill. <laughs>